what's happening guys and welcome to the truck and show must go on so I picked up this load from the last one when you guys see me when that trailer got hit it's a mattress load and it's called for driver assist meaning you know I have to unload the mattresses only in like uh, it was four stops only three stops right now they're unloading it for me so I'm at the place over here furniture place overstock and now they're unloading the mattresses I'm gonna show you real quick walk with me over here Somebody touched it. It's a, it's a floor, right? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, let's just take it. Yeah. And you guys are fast. <laughs> but we got 70 in here, right? 72, 72 pieces. Around there, are actually unloading it for me. That's good. So, look around the store real quick. i show you guys. So, um, yeah, they took about six and a half hours to load me, so everything got uh, delayed. Then there was ice on the roads that night when I drove over here. We still made it, no problem. Not that I'm not used to it since I pretty much all my experience is driving in the mountains in Montana with ice. So the other night was just like a regular day for me, you know. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, this is uh, Overstock, the store that I'm delivering. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. So I want to talk to you guys about um, Come Data Car. All right, let's talk about come data car. So when you become a truck driver and you sign up for a company, you're gonna get assigned a come data car, which is a credit car, and that's that becomes your fuel car, and it becomes the car where they send your paycheck to. So you can up to have the option of getting a deposit to your bank, like direct deposit which I rec highly recommend for you guys to do that and this is the reason why come that a car sucks guys they suck the people there is there to come that up their customer service is shitty and you know you're gonna fight with those guys um, so and uh, some places that car don't work when you swipe it and you can't buy things uh, it all depends you know that's how an operator my cars uh, as credit so I can use it anywhere I want um, but it does it works as credit but it's not because money's in there so but I know the companies that car might work like debit and some places don't accept come down a car but this is the car you need to fuel up with so you know every time you fuel you know as a company driver you don't have to worry about the prices or anything because you just stop and fuel um, they might have this places they don't want you to fuel it most of the companies are going to tell you the places that you can fuel at and 100% um, will be, you know, the TAs, Petros, uh, so on, you know, those big um, fuel stops, fuel trucks. So basically that's what that is. So um, this is the issue now. I had an issue. Somebody stole money out of my car. So how do they do that? I'm sure a lot of you guys, this had to happen because it happens to multiple people. And I'm surprised that now that I mentioned this happened to me, a lot of people come out telling me, yeah, that happened to me too. So they put these car readers inside on top of the car swipe when you put your car in. And it looks just like it. And then you swipe in, they get all your information, and then they go in a shopping spring. You know, they go steal your money, go to the ATM and get the money. But by the time come that a car catches them, it's too late. You know, they can just pretty much drain your account out of there. Um, thank God that I try not to keep a lot of money in the car and I'm constantly um, moving the money around because um, I didn't up for the 
option to have um, direct deposit to my account because every time I deliver, they pay me. I deliver, the next day I get paid, okay? So, um, and they load money to that car, so then I go ahead and pay for my fuel. Uh, every time I pay when my that car for fuel, I get a huge amount of discounts. If I use my regular card to pay, like my bank account, car, then I don't get the discount. So, you know, it's like the forcing you to do this, so, you know, you do it. Now, I'm, I'm going to be extra careful now and jiggle around that machine and make sure there's not the fake one, okay, so I don't get my money still. So, fortunately, it's only uh, less than 500 bucks it took for me. And now I get to file a dispute and a claim for fraudulent, and then wait maybe a week or so for come down a car to refund me the money. So my car is blocked right now, and I have to order a new car. So yeah, this sucks. You know they're gonna have to overnight that somewhere over here in Missouri where I'm at. Um, that way uh, I can actually, um, you know, get my car. You know, so. Yeah, so right now it's like, if I get another load, they won't be able to, you know, because my company gives me the option of get up to 40% advance on my loads. So I get the load, I get 40% on that load already. I love doing that because I'm already ha almost halfway paid with it. And I use that to, you know, fuel up or whatever, you know, and it works out for me. I love that, you know, deliver the load, they pay me the next day. So, um... If I get another load right now, <laughs> um, you know, they won't be able to load anything because the car is blocked and uh, I gotta wait for them to overnight me a car here in Missouri. I'm in Missouri, so somewhere here in Missouri. So I got one more stop after this and I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna get that going. So, but yeah, fun because the shipper messed up everything yesterday and I had another load that was going down to Texas. The, rate per mile from Texas to Missouri is really good and from Missouri to Texas is super good so that was my plan I already had two loads ready to go and uh, they have to cancel my other load because of uh, you know I couldn't make it to the appointment so they took too long to load me so everything got uh, delayed so what we gotta do now is uh, well you now this thing with the car happened so you know um, Hopefully I can get a load back the weekend or just going to have to wait till Monday. My company requires, the company I'm leased onto require um, for me to do a DOT inspection every three months. And uh, because that's what they want. Uh, legally, you know, it's every year DOT requires you to have one. So, But my company does every three years, every three months. So that's what I got to do. So I got to get that done before the 31st. So I'm going to work on getting all that stuff done. And, uh, yeah, and then keep going, you know. Keep going. Hopefully Monday can get back to Texas. And I wanted to do brakes on my truck. Uh, they're not bad. They're, like, halfway there, you know. So, But I just want brand new ones. I don't let them get past that. And, uh, you know, just basically, I stay safe on the road. You know, it's better safe than sorry. So... But I wasn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it because they weren't paying really good money to go to Houston. And that's what my mechanic is at. And he's going to give me a huge discount there. And I'm just, you know, I, I opted to just like, let me try to make some money this week. That, you know, this happened. And trucking, a lot of things can happen. Unfortunately, you can't, there's a lot of things you can't control. You can try to do the best you can but there's a lot of things you can't control because at the end of the day guys when you guys do this job you realize that the shipper and receivers they're the boss they're the ones you can hurry up and get there on time you can be early you can do you can have everything you know to make you you know your license is that everything is up today everything's good to go and i mean you know and you get the good price and you get there and they take eight hours to load you and they want you to be there, like, you know, they only leave like an hour for you to like use the restroom and, you know, take a little break to just get there. But now they low you eight hours, that's it, it's over. Now you're late with your appointments. And uh, yesterday I had a customer that was furious. I'm telling you, this guy was just, 
a really bad day, you know, and he's pissed off because I'm late and then he has to wait. My delivery was at 10 in the morning and he had to wait to the, um, you know, uh, to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And he was pissed. Well, it was 5.30. And uh, the guy was really racist and, uh, you know, I really refused for him to unload me and I had to send somebody else. I just, I'm not going to stand for it, you know, I got to stand for my rights. I'm a minority in this country and uh, he's not going to talk to me that way. So for some reason he can not say that he, he couldn't understand my English. Whatever, you know. <laughs> I don't care, man. I know you guys can understand my English. Yes, I have an accent, but that's, come on now. And then he's just, just being racist towards me and I, I didn't like that part. You know, I don't work for him. I told him, I don't work for you, man. You know, you don't pay me, man, so don't talk to me like that. You know, you're not, you're, you're nobody to me. All right, you work for your boss, so don't talk to me that way. So, you know, and this is the reason why I became an owner of prayer, so I don't have to have anybody talking to me like I'm an idiot, you know, making me feel inferior because I'm a minority. But it's just the stuff you gotta deal with in this industry, unfortunately. But, you know, hey, you gotta smile at people, you know, and you gotta tell them, you, you gotta speak up, man. But, um, I'm gonna show you these guys over here, man. They're, they're working, you know. Yeah, they're working, getting it done. So, look at look at this guy. Look at this guy. Shit. He earns his money, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh oh, uh oh. He's going surfing, man. <laughs> Hey, you're on YouTube, man. You guys are on YouTube right now. I got a YouTube channel. To hey, when you get famous, I call you. I've already been on TV. Oh, I've for real? Been. I'm going to be on a podcast. This... I, I will be on Hugh Baby's podcast at the end of February. I believe it's going to be February 28th. Check out yeah. Hugh Baby's podcast Oh, shoot. On I'm, I'm going to check it out, dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, right on, right on. Right on. The end, of the, end of next month. Really? 28th, I believe. Really? The 28th to the 29th. What's it about? What's it about? Religion, politics, economics. Just anything the good stuff. For mo mainly religion. Mainly, mainly religion. religion. The good stuff, man. Yeah, the they've stuff. invited me on because I am an atheist. You're an atheist? And okay. they are right. very, they're religious. Okay, they're religious. So so they want to talk to you. They want to talk to you. <laughs> which is a good idea. Yeah, you which know, is a really good idea. Different should yeah talk yeah that's yeah yeah, yeah. The way it of be. course man it should, yeah. that's the way everybody that's has their the, own opinions that's when you know people don't talk yeah that's when things get dangerous that's when it, things get yeah no that, you're right man when you, when you don't know yeah you can fear yeah that's true you know that's but true. if you know that's true alleviates that and plus you can come to an understanding you can yes do better things and in people the world should do that, it's hiding from each other and be like oh my god you, you know you gotta realize that you know most of this where are you from and, um, argentina Argentina? Argentina, yeah. I kind of yeah. tell you, not from the West. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You no, like no. it here? Oh, I love it, man. I've been in this country for 21 years now. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, you're, I'm an Argentinian American now. You're American. Now. You're American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Here you are. I am, sir. That's right. That's right. I'm proud of it. You know, I got two kids here. You ever been to My Canada? My wife is here. No, I want to, though. Ooh, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, I heard yeah. good things about it. I'm in Montreal, yeah. Toronto. Yeah, Montreal. I want to go there, man. Yeah. Gun laws are a little strict. Gun laws are a little strict. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I live in Montana, man. <laughs> I got a lot of guns. <laughs> oh, Montana? We, man, I love Montana, dude. I walk around I walk around a strap, man. Well, you can legally here in Missouri. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no. In Montana, neither. You don't need to have... You just, like, go there, fill up a little paper, boom. Walk around with a machine gun. <laughs> Arizona's good too with gun laws, but Montana's a, Alaska's number one, right? Montana's a, a listed number four. What do you mean by listed? Oh, like of the like less restricted laws for gun laws, you know? For gun laws? Yeah, Montana's uh, number four, so man. Here's the thing: you got Texas. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's very, very nice. Yeah, Texas. Got, Texas, uh, oh for Missouri. sure. Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missouri. Yeah. Believe it or not, my friend, we actually give Texas a run for their money. There's people in Texas who look like, wow, man, like you guys are 
Yeah. I had no idea. It's like, oh yeah, it's Missouri, man. What do you expect? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, I love Montana, man. It's the West, you know. It's just right. cowboys and Indians. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody's nice and man, it's beautiful. Chicago, right? Oh, I live. I used to live there, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, li right. I lived there for a while, I love man. Chicago. It's Chicago's weird. nice, but you get oh, gun laws there suck, man. That yeah. What? In Chicago, the gun laws, man. They, they you don't shitty. bother me that much because yeah. as long as you live in a nice place, here's the thing. Yeah. I'm a gun guy. Yeah, me too. The yeah. thing is, is, I was a gun guy in Illinois. Yeah. All you have to do is obey the law. Obey the law, yeah. And yeah. you'll be fine. Right, right, so right. That's the thing about Illinois. Everyone says, oh, Illinois's got a restrict. Well, no, it's funny for Illinois. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone's got a gun. <laughs> Everyone's got a gun. Yeah. It's just that, no, no, everyone's got a gun over there. Whether it's legal or you know whether I mean? it's legal it's or illegal. No, everyone does, man. Everyone Illinois does. Have yeah. guns. There's too many shootings over there, man. That's no, why yeah. I got tired yeah. of it, man. A lot of people think it does. That's only a yeah. certain part of Chicago. Yeah. That most, yeah. majority of those Where I used to live. St. Louis. <laughs> St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, St. Louis Way is crazy. Yeah. When we dropped to number four, we were number one. Yeah. Holy shoot. You know what Chicago is? No. 27. Huh. See, doesn't even get into the top. It, it's just got that, you know, that fame. You no, know what I mean? No, I'm, I'm a touring musician. I yeah. Say the worst place outside of St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Was Detroit. Detroit and, sucks, man. Yeah, Detroit <laughs> I hate Detroit. Um, Detroit's pretty freaking bad. Milwaukee, Milwaukee too, is, man. Uh, just outside of New Jersey. Um, yeah. What's that place called? Hey, let's move this. Okay, if you want to. Yeah, we got that place called right. What, that place right outside of New Jersey, man. What's that place called? Uh, oh, what, Rhode Island? No, 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 no. What's that? Talk to someone down. I'm about to go. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> you ever seen that show, The Wire? No. I'm going to try and this blank in here. New Jersey. Camden, New Jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camden, New Jersey. Yeah, I've been there. I went through Camden a few times. Yeah. I didn't go through Camden. Yeah. Yeah. Camden, yeah, you gotta be careful from Jersey, man. Camden, New Jersey is pretty bad. You gotta be careful from Jersey, brother. Did you hear about Michigan? Oh, no. Oh, 